Hello and welcome to the Korea Bay Knitting Podcast. Hello, my name's Rebecca. I'm a knitter and knitwear designer based in Edinburgh in Scotland and this is a vlog or a podcast all about knitting, what I'm currently knitting on, what I've been knitting on, what I'd like to cast on in the not too distant future. And I'm back with another episode. It's been two weeks. I've got lots to show. <laughs> when do I not have lots to show? Um, but I've got three, well, I've got a pattern release to talk about. I've got a test call to talk about. I've got a couple of nothing new cast on but some progress on some cast ons and then like a couple of updates like personal updates that are just fun to share um so let's see how we get on um let's just jump straight in with what i'm wearing it's also finished objects and it's also a pattern release um so today is alder day the alder sweater is now live on ravelry and on etsy um the alder is a top down i've got one to show hold up actually um so my other sample and I'll pop some pictures on while we're talking, um, while we're talking, whilst I'm talking at you. <laughs> the older is a top down raglan sweater. Um, it has this really beautiful textured stitch. Um, so it is a slip stitch design. You're only ever working, I think this is mosaic knitting, but I'm honestly not sure. We were talking about this in the test group and I am of the opinion that I've never knit mosaic before, but mosaic I think is defined by creating a colour work design when you're only using one strand of yarn and slip stitches and at this point you only ever use like one yarn at a time and you slip stitches and there's colour work like it's it, it is a colour motif so potentially this is mosaic knitting <laughs> even though I didn't think I I didn't think I knew how to do that <laughs> maybe I do um it's very simple it's like a four it's technically an eight stitch an eight row repeat but like it's four and then four like switching the colours around so four row repeat um, it was a really really straightforward test there were basically there were very very few issues raised in the test so that's always a sign to me that it's going to be quite a uh, like beginner friendly not quite I don't know if it's beginner beginner like if it's your first ever sweater it might be a challenge but if you're like there's not any massively specialist skills and things like increasing and decreasing a pattern is pretty like it flows quite well it's quite intuitive that's the word I'm looking for um it has got a pretty like box, like not a boxy fit, but like definitely has some positive ease. Um, and it has these kind of like tapered sleeves, which I think are quite like an 80s fit of sleeve, which I really like. And then folded collar, cut hems, cuffs, all those things in what I'm calling colour one. But again, you can switch it around and do it the other way. So yeah, the pattern is live. I used a uh, Sonder yarn, Sunday morning DK for both my samples. So, oh gosh, let me see if I can get this right. I think this sample, the red, the darker colour is Copper Kettle and the lighter colour is Simple Pleasures. And then for this one, the, this is in the Ecru base and this is Wildwood, this sort of greeny grey. And this colour is Cloud Nine. They've put together kits um, if you're interested in using Sonder and if you are somewhere that you can get. I know they're looking at some possible international friendly shipping options. Um, I don't know when they'll go live, but I did to hear from a little birdie so you can also get your hands on some of this yarn um but it is a really standard weight dk like standard dk weight yarn so there are lots of other alternatives if you can't get sonder or if you want to use something that's closer to you or more than your budget or in your stash or just yarn you like more <laughs> um the testers have done such a good job so uh, i would definitely recommend having a look at the projects there are some really really cool colors there's like a black and white one which i really love um, there are a couple of like mermaid ones which are all sort of blues and purples and pe uh, f like speckles. There are lots of really lovely autumnal colours. There's one which I absolutely adore which is striped and so of course like it's two colours but if you change those two colours to anything else you can stripe it. So there's a very very cool striped version. As always size inclusive, uh, there are 10 sizes, it goes covers a full size range. Um, it's got no shaping so it would do quite a lot of bodies um of all genders and yeah i think that's about it it's it's a really um it's quite intuitive so like it's not chart i don't think there's a chart to help you along the way like this is what it looks like but it's not heavily charted or anything so once you get going you can pretty much just go and just like glance at the pattern and things like oh i need to slip her sleeves or like oh i need to check my stitch count um but it's very rhythmic 
It's a bit of a, it's not a labour of love. Like I definitely found it quite quick. If I think about my Cargill sweater, which is my first pattern, um, it was a lot of knitting. This is not quite as much knitting, but it's definitely more than like stocking it in the round. So yeah, this one I love. I didn't think I was gonna like this one as much, um, but we got the pictures back and I love how I look in this one. I think it really suits my colouring, um, which I was surprised by. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. Um, when I was setting it up, I just thought the contrast was really high and I was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. And I saw the pictures and I thought, no, that looks really cool. Um, so yeah, that's live. Is there any, I feel like I normally say things. There's a discount code available uh, till the end of the weekend. It's down below. And if you apply to test at this, check your inboxes because I send like a little bonus discount code to anyone who applied to test but wasn't chosen. Um, and yeah, it is a... It's a big weekend for pattern, or a big week for pattern releases. There's so I knew like in advance that this would be the MCAL weekend. Uh, so I was kind of expecting there to be a lot of MCAL hype. But I think everyone has released a pattern, like no Petitna and no Andrew Maori, but basically everyone else. Um, there's a new Sari Northern pattern, there's a new Isolde Teague pattern, I think Moonstruck Knits, is that Natasha Hornsby? Has just released a new beautiful new pattern. Um, Baby Cocktails, who is that? Uh, Thea Coleman has just released a new pattern, like every big designer has released a pattern, which is a bit nerve wracking because um, it just means it's like a flood of new stuff and that kind of like, they all shoot to the top of Ravelry because their designs are amazing. <laughs> and so I'm just hoping that mine um, can get up there. So if you are interested in the pattern um, at any point or like you want to show some support, clicking on the link to Ravelry will help with the algorithm. Um, and any like saves or any like added to your queue will also help and yeah we'll see I'm really proud of this design it was quite a technical one I started it way back in February we went on a ski trip to Italy and I remember sitting in our Airbnb uh, while Sam was having a nap working out the yoke and that sample is still somewhere but I got the increases so wrong I was just not counting properly and I've given the yarn away that I used for the rest of the yoke so that one's never getting this again <laughs> But um, I did, like it's nice. Yeah, it's been a long time in the works. So it feels really cool to have it. Um, I had this one graded by my amazing grader and she did such a good job with this. It was a complicated grade, but the fit, the fit across the sizes is really, really good. So I'm super impressed with the work there. And I think I broke her brain a little bit. Like there was a couple of days where she was like, I need to get away from this. It's, it's, it's a lot, <laughs> but the end result is perfect. So um, yeah, I can only thank her for that. So yeah, I probably should like, I'm just being really lazy because I know we took amazing pictures with Jasmine that I'm not getting up to show you this because I just will put pictures on screen instead. Um, but yeah, there we go. That is the Alder sweater. It's named after Ben Alder, which is a Monroe here in Scotland, um, which we did at the start of the summer. And the, the, la like the, 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 the sort of last section is really scrambly. Um, and so you have to do like some proper climbing, also like little like jagged rocks and this texture just really, like this like scrabbly little texture really reminded me of it. So that is why it's called Alder. And yeah, we went and took pictures on Sunday with Jasmine, who is incredible. Um, it's so funny to think that she just reached out like a year ago and said like, hey, I'm looking to like have some other stuff in my portfolio, would you be interested? And I think she's done every pattern release since. Um, and she's so good. She's every every time like so. This time there was myself. There was um, Rebecca. There were three Rebeccas. There was me, Rebecca, and two more Rebeccas who both come to my knit night. Um, and one of the Rebeccas was also in the Corin photo shoot um, with a blue, yeah, a light blue version. Um, and the other two. So um, there was Vanessa, who is the woolly worker here on YouTube and on uh, Instagram, and then. Um, Rebecca that I fondly just call Spanish Rebecca because she's Spanish. <laughs> they had never done the pictures before and so they were like oh my gosh like and then they got the pictures back and they're like these are amazing like these just look so good and I was like yeah that's just Jasmine like you go you rock up looking a bit wonky like nah I was so tired and the pictures come back and you're just like like wow yeah that's great so she just captures the vibe it was so nice and it was a really nice day we went to Dean Village which is a very beautiful part of Edinburgh and we met quite late in the day. We usually do like an early shoot. So we usually go at like 10 or 11, but we met later and it was lovely. It was sunny, but the, it's cooled off a little bit. And it was so autumnal. Yeah, I really loved it. 
So all that to say, pattern is live. Please go and show it some love. Um, I'd really appreciate it. I'm feeling a bit, I feel really good about the design. Like I'm really proud of what is out. I'm just a bit like, oh, did I have to pick a weekend where everyone else is releasing? Um, I'm gonna have to like fight for a little bit of, fight for some attention, <laughs> which um, yeah, is what it is, I guess. And it does mean that we're solidly in sweater season or knitting season because everyone is releasing really cool new patterns. Um, I'm going to stop talking about this sweater now because it's been 10 minutes, but I'm not going to stop wearing it. Um, we're going away for today and tomorrow, or oh, go back tomorrow night. And I think on Sunday I've got a knitting breakfast. There's, um, if anyone's local in Edinburgh, Subsea, which is a really, really, really good um, South Indian restaurant on Ferry Road, does a craft brunch. And I think it's on Sunday. No worried, it's Saturday. No, I think it's on Sunday morning. Um, but they're on Instagram, so my plan is to wear it there. I'm excited, that's this like maiden voyage. Okay, let's move on to my test recall, which is also a finished object. Um, I knit a shawl. Let's just start by saying that. I knit a fingering weight shawl, which I've never done before. Um, you, if you were watching last time, you might remember I um, did a test call for an advent cardigan called the Daft Days Cardigan. Um, it is designed to use like mini skeins, but honestly, you can use anything. It's striped. Again, I'll put a picture of it here. Um, and that's going to be a charity release. So all the proceeds from when it releases until the end of 2023, which will be like most of December, and it'll come out, I think, like mid to late November, will go to charity. So I've got a big target. I'm going to be matching. Uh, I can just, yeah, I'm going to be matching up to £5,000 worth of sales. So if between the two patterns it raises £5,000 and I match £5,000, I'll be donating £10,000, which is a huge amount to donate. And it'd be very, very cool if that can happen. Um, we got pretty close. I did a charity release last year and raised just over 5000 So I'm just doubling it. Um, it's been a good year for pattern releases for me and it feels like something I can do is like donate that money to a, some of that money to a cause. Um, so I'll be I'll be matching up to 5k of sales um, and there will be two patterns so hence why I decided to knit a shawl it's not like the thing I always knit but I was really eager to like cover as many bases so that like not everyone who's a garment knitter or like to so knit DK weight has an option to like donate and participate and get a pattern um, even if they don't knit garments and so I made a shawl version and this is the Daft Days shawl and um, it smells so good it smells of my wool wash and it is amazing so here it is oh it looks so good on screen um so it's this again slip stitches I am in a real slip stitch I'm in my slip stitch era slip stitch and color work era um but it's really lovely it makes these little bars across the stitches there's no when I did the cardio test call, I was like, oh, is it brioche? It's not brioche. And it's actually not rib. It's just basically like knits and pearls, like purling the wrong side and knitting the right side and some slip stitches thrown in. Um, it's super simple and it has this nice big chunky border of ribbing because I feel like it flows quite nicely into the ribbing. Um, but you, the good thing about this is it's like super customizable. So you could change that part if you are a prolific shawl knitter and there are things that you like, especially about like the border, you could 100% do that. I did mine here with 24 contrast colour stripes. Um, again, it starts here and it works out, so you can make it bigger or smaller depending on your yarn, your preferences. I think in an ideal world, I probably would have added like four more stripes for it to be a bit bigger because I just want to slank it. Like I just want to like completely wrap myself up. Um, but I still think this is a pretty decent length and I've been practicing my shawl techniques. Um, there we go. I think that's how you do it. So like the triangle that comes down. Ta-da! I think there's also a way to wear it like over your shoulder, but I don't really, I'm not really getting that one down quite as well. But I do think this like dramatic V really helps with like styling it. Um, I have used, so I used for this one, Marina Skewer's Mend It Four Ply. It's quite a loose gauge, it's like a 22 stitch gauge, so like quite drapey and I love this yarn. I thought it worked really nicely for this pattern. I did not use very much yarn, I used a hundred, this weighs 190 grams total. Um, so I have enough to make a whole second one, <laughs> but I also have different yarn to make another sample, so I'm not going to rush into that one. Um, 
And yeah, like I say, this is 24 skeins, 24 skeins, 24 stripes with the goal of like, if you were to use a contrast color, this is what it would look like with an advent. Um, but I think I still have it down here. This is, oh, it's quite nice about never tidying up. These things are always where you left them. Um, I did actually fade some mini skeins using this stitch pattern. Um, these are some of the leftovers of my cardigan. And you could do the same with this. So this is the same pattern, but instead of using a contrast color stripe, I'm just going into the next color. And that's five mini skeins. One, two, three, four, five different colors. So it'd be very cool faded. Also, I've done like four, four rows make a stripe. But you could also do six rows make a stripe or eight rows make a stripe to make thicker stripes or you could go down. It does look quite fragmented with a with just two rows, but it looks pretty cool. So yeah, super, super flexible. And yeah, I'm just really excited. It's nice to have a shawl. I think this is going to be gifted because as soon as I started posting about it, my mum told me she liked it so much. This is definitely not how you wear a shawl, but we're here now. Um, so this might be something which makes its way into her Christmas present bundle. And my mum's name is Marina, and this is Marina Skewers Yarn, and Marina is not a very popular name in the UK at least. So it does feel like a little bit, what's the word? Like preordained, <laughs> apropos. So yeah, all that to say, I have a test call for this. Um, it's down below. I will say I'm not gonna be looking for crazy numbers of testers. I usually have about 30 testers because I'm usually testing 10 sizes. There are not 10 sizes. So what I think I'll be looking for is maybe 15 testers, um, mostly for variety. I'd love to see what this looks like in a fade. I'd love to see what it looks like with an actual advent. Obviously I just use three, oh yeah, I use three colors. So I use like a red, a pink and a gray black. It'd be lovely to see it with like 24 different colors. Yeah, so, um, or even two colors, I think it'd be lovely. That's my other idea is if I give this one to my mum, I might just get more of this dark black, or like gray black. And I think with one more skein of this, I could just stripe it black and white, which I think I would get more aware of. So yeah, the main thing is variety and I guess obviously testing it, but it's a relatively straightforward pattern. So I'm not super worried about finding difficulties. Of course, that's always part of the test net is like, what did, what's easy to knit and is it written in the way that's easiest to follow um, but yeah I'd love to be able to show some variety with a stitch pattern so that is the Daphne shawl it's um I think it's really lovely I like it a lot um it was a lot it wasn't that much work like it's 700 meters or something so it's not like crazy amounts of work um it's a relatively short test it's like six weeks test um but I do think there's something about it, the fact that it's growing bigger and bigger that is quite like demoralizing. <laughs> um, yeah, you're just like still going, but the first half grows so quickly. And then what's quite nice is because it's striped, it's just like, it's quite more, it's just like one more stripe, one more stripe. I definitely think as well with um, an advent color, like with this one, I was less excited by the end because I knew what these stripes looked like, but if it was a different color every time, I think that'd be quite exciting. Um, the last thing I was going to say on this is it didn't use up very much yarn. So I weighed out my yarn every single time and I've included that in the test form. But like stripe number one used like half a gram. And I think the last stripe only used like seven and a half grams. So if you have like leftovers from an advent in the past, I think this would be a really good way of using that up. Or if you just have scraps. Um, yeah. Also, this one is fingering weight. Um, the pattern's written for fingering weight, but it's a shawl. So if you wanted to do DK or sport or whatever, that would also be a really good, really good option. So that's below. I think I'll close it on sa sun Saturday night, probably tomorrow night. I'll wait and see how, just because there's going to be so many people, like, and not that it's going to be huge, but more like, uh, I don't have that many slots. <laughs> So usually I keep a test net open for like two or three days, but I don't have like, I only have a certain number of slots to fill. And usually I've got it open for a long time to try and make sure I can fill like the smallest and largest sizes. But with this one, there's not that need. So it'll really just be a case of um, getting enough people, which I think we'll have pretty quickly. That sounds very egotistical and up myself. I'm sorry that that sounded so like, oh, I'll definitely get enough testers. Um, but I just mean, I don't want to open it for longer because then I'll have to email more people and say I don't have space, which is sad and I'd rather not have to do that. 
And so I'll keep it, I'll only keep it open until tomorrow night. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I have, I think, only four more, four whips to show you. Um, there are a couple of things that I worked on last time that I've done like a couple of rows since, so it didn't feel like much point in showing you it. Um, but I had seven whips last time on do you. Yeah, so I think there's only one thing I'm not showing you, which is my leaf cardigan in plain grey. And I've done like three rows in stock on it, so it's not really worth. Oh, I have one you cast on. I just told you I had none, and I do have one. Oh well. Okay, let's start with an easy breezy one. Um, I've made some progress on my Sophie shawl. Um, I'm now over halfway, so I've started my decreases. This is just getting a little bit of love here and there. I actually ran out of cords for, I mean, I had like a giant cord, but I ran out of like normal size cords for my chowgu because I have so many things on my needle right now. Um, so this was on scrap yarn for a few days this week, which means it's not had very much on it. Um, but it is looking so good. I'm excited to have this done. I think this is going to be really nice just to tuck under my coat before it gets like super cold. And it is so fuzzy. This is Angora. It's Fonty Angora um, in this colour. It looks much more, like it's much more orange red in real life than it is on the website. I had a look, somebody asked me for the colour um, and it definitely looks a lot different on the website. <laughs> um, but it is, oh, it's so soft. It's got like a crazy halo. It's relatively pricey. It's like 15 pounds per 50 gram ball, 25 gram ball. Um, so I'm using three of them and like I say this is, let's see, I guess that is my halfway point. So that is my halfway point. It's going to be pretty well sized but um, it does mean it's like £45 for a little scarf. But it is Angora. So I'm just plodding away on this one um, and I have entered this into the um, Tommaso Sukor Cal um, which is a uh, knit along um, run by, I can't remember who else I did this last time, but I know that High Fibre Knits is one of the hosts um, and the goal being knit things that look like tomato soup and this this meets the requirement. I've got it in this navy bag right now and I just think the colour combination of like this and the navy and the gold is beautiful. Okay, I need to change my battery. I was not organised, I thought everything was charged. I sat down to film this morning and nothing was charged. So it's gonna die, but my other battery is charging. So hopefully it'll be a pretty quick turnaround. I'm gonna see if I can get through one more whip before I have to change the battery. This one is in my mushroom bag. Um, it's from Lysander and Olive who are no longer doing bags, but um, the mushrooms have got little gold on them, which I think is so cute. And even Sam, my partner this week was like, oh, where did you get that mushroom bag? And he never notices my project bags. So, that says something about how cool the bag is. Okay, I showed this last time and honestly, I think it looks the same position as last time, but I have ripped it mostly out and restarted. <laughs> so this is my stick season hat. Uh, my stick season sweater, I should have shown first, I didn't. My stick season sweater, um, I can put a picture of here, is, a, is my next pattern release, it's coming out in November. The testers are flying on the stick season, I think there are quite a few already finished completely. Um, it is a pretty quick knit, it's a drop shoulder textured pattern um, and I had a leftover skein of the colour I used for my first sample. Oh that looks looking real good now. Yes, I like this way more. Um, I had something else going on last time with this part and I decided to just pull it back and just make the brim, just make the body of the hat the main texture for the sweater and I'm happy I did that. Um, and yeah, the pattern Oh, now I need to change my battery. Okay, let's see if I can get through this. The pattern is going live in November and it is called Stick Season. It is inspired by a song written by Noah Kane, who is um, an Amer American folk, indie folk artist who I adore. And he's from Vermont. And Stick Season is describing the time of year in Vermont where the leaves fall from the trees, but the snow hasn't started yet. So pretty much November time. Um, there was some really bad flooding in Vermont earlier this year and so this pattern will be released in addition to the sweater and all the proceeds from this will go to a relief fund for rebuilding after the floods in Vermont. Um, but yeah, it's really cute. This colour is called Daybreak and it is from Explorer Nets and Fibres. Both of my samples are in Explorer Nets and Fibres. It's a collaboration with them. I didn't know this. I was so excited and um, Ali from Explorer Next was talking about like the releases they've got planned for the rest of the year and she's like yeah and of course we'll do an update for Stick Season. 
And I was like, you did a whole shop update? Like, that's so cool. So I didn't expect that at all. I don't know what I expected, but I just didn't think that's, that would happen. Um, this yarn is lovely. It's non -super, the one I'm using is non super wash base. It softens up beautifully and there's going to be a shop update for it. So that's pretty cool. Um, the last thing about this is my little stitch marker. I made, oh, that's the wrong way I made some stitch markers to take to Scottish Yarn Festival and just to hand out to people when they came and saw me. <laughs> and um, I'm going to do the same for Rhinebeck, which is in less than two weeks, so I should do this pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be making some and just bringing them along and then just handing them to anyone who wants them if you come and see me. So if you want a cute little leaf that you can... I, I said uh, at Scottish Yarn Festival, it is made with love and not very much skill. So I cannot promise it will not fall apart, but I can promise that it was crafted with love and care. Um, okay, I'm gonna change my battery. Okay, we're back, I'm fully charged. Uh, okay, I have three more works in progress to show you and I'm gonna leave the exciting, like the most exciting for the end. So I'm gonna go into my stick season sweater, which is lovely, but this is less exciting because I've shown you it before. <laughs> it is in this bag, which is getting too big for, but I do adore from Apollony. It's a French company, they sent me this bag. Um, I am anxiously awaiting their shop update because they've moved onto cord bags and I already have a cord bag I love, but if they have more of these like brocade jacquard ones, I think I will get one. So this is my second sample of my six season sweater. Uh, I should have already put a picture up, but if I've not, then this is what it looks like. <laughs> Um, and I think I'm flying through this. So the body has got this like, I'm calling these the sticks. So in my head, I'm thinking about a few future versions and I'd like to make one without the texture. And in my head, that's the stick season sweater without sticks. That's just, that's not particularly based on anything, but these are my head of the sticks. Um, so it's got these like, this texture at the top. And then what I really love about it is the detail. So it has this, this um, rib, detail that runs all the way down the arm. It's super hard to see when it's not blocked out actually. I feel like I'm just making life difficult for everyone right now. Um, and then that rib detail runs down into the body and all the way down to the hem. So this sample is for my stepdad. Um, I have knit him a sweater once before. He's, he's very, very knit worthy. And I knit him a sweater once before and I got the sizing completely wrong. It was all over colour work and it was just it is a bit of more than I could chew. I the knitting of it is fine, but the color, the sizing of it's pretty awful. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was just a bit silly. So he was maybe a little bit. I think he was a little bit put out that he didn't get a Lanark sweater when I did my pictures then. Um, so I messaged him and asked him if he would like to take part in the pictures for six season. And so I'm making him a sample. So this one is sample size six. There are quite a few testers. There's actually. Um, there's actually a picture, I don't think I can, I don't, I'll check if, if the tester has put it on their profile public then I will share it and if they've not, if they've just sent it to the group chat then I won't share it. But one of the, one of the testers has finished um, their version for I think their husband, their partner anyway, and it looks so good. Um, it's, it's, like a, it's like a white or like an off-white colour and it looks amazing. And that gave me a lot of motivation to finish this one because I think it, it's the first time I've seen it on um, a male body and I was really impressed with it. <laughs> Sounds like I'm putting my own horn, but um, I was like, oh, that that really suits that really suits that guy. So that is quite nice. Um, so this is size six. It is exactly the size that um, I think it's going to give him like eight centimeters of these. I need to get him to try this on before I get to the body. I've done what about eight centimeters of body. We're going to the cinema on, th on Sunday, so my plan is on Sunday to take this with me and hopefully get like another ten centimeters done or something. Um, and yeah, I feel like I'm doing pretty good with the deadline for like, this is going to come out early November. Ideally, I'd like this finished before Rhinebeck, which I guess two weeks or maybe not actually. That's probably a bit hopeful. Um, but I think I knit my sleeves for the first sample in like a day each of like evening knitting. So I'm feeling really chill about this one. It knits up pretty quickly. So I'm just going to keep plowing away with it. The big thing will be making sure I get to try it on and we can check the size. Um, or the length, sorry. I did add a bit more to the yoke on this one than I did on mine. Um, but again, the pattern just tells you when to try it on and have a little fit and also um, to steam block out these shoulder panels because that does add a bit of length. So yeah, I think we're gonna see the next Sunday. 
and I'm anxious to do so because then I can take my sweater and get them to try it on and see that it's... Hopefully I've got most of the body done by then and what I can do is try it on and see how much longer I need to make the body and from there on it should be pretty easy, pretty easy going. So that's my second sample. This is also knit in Explore Knits and Fibres. Uh, I think it's called, I want to call it Earthy DK, but it's a non super wash DK. Um, this colour is linen. It's this kind of like stony, stony beige, stony grey. Um, and I think I mentioned this in my first one. I think that this yarn, before you um, block it, it's fine. Like it's pretty soft. It's nice to work with, but like it's not most exciting. And then you block it and it is like silky soft, which really surprised me. Um, so I'm excited for this one. I think it's a good gift knit yarn. Um, it does pull a little bit, but it's very soft, so it's not a surprise. Um, I think it'll make a good gift knit because this is nice to skin soft. And when knitting a sweater for someone else, it's always nice to make sure that they can wear it. Unlike the first version I made. Uh, so yeah, that's my sixth season. Plowing through, it's my meeting knitting this week. So like if I'm, I can knit this without looking, it's mostly just stocking it with that little rib detail at the side. So it's anything that I need to knit whilst not looking. This is taking priority. Okay, an exciting one next. Firstly, I washed my project bag. This is my, I've got three of these patina bags. I love them, they're a great size. This one had like little yellow marks on it, which I think might have been from the flowers. Like, you know, when they let that dust out, I think it was that. And I cleared a project out of it and I thought, you know what, let me just, I just hand washed it. And the filth in the water that came out was kind of scary. And then the um, color that it is now, it's so much brighter. Um, yeah, I'm realizing I washed it with stitch markers in the pocket, but they seem to be fine. So I, um, <laughs> I'm kind of touring the magazines. I've got uh, a pattern coming out, I think, in the next two weeks in a magazine. And then I've got one coming out in a magazine early next year and I'm now designing for another magazine. Um, but I think after this, I'm gonna take a little break from magazine. It's a lot of work. And I'm kind of still releasing on a regular schedule and like doing the magazine supplementary and that's quite a lot to deal with. However, I have real, really realised that what I like about magazines is the ability to be a bit more out there um, and like editorial and like it's a very visual thing right so you're, you're, the magazines are very like I definitely think about things like pom pom and liner it's very visual and a lot of like real like eye-catching pieces that are maybe not the most functional to wear and I think that's the opportunity to make the most of magazines and do things I wouldn't normally do so the magazine I'm designing for is the journal Scottish Yarn and um, it is a really lovely um, magazine which is the Susan who runs it is based in Edinburgh and we run into each other a lot of shows and um, what was I going to say? Oh all the patterns are knit up in Scottish Yarn so it felt like a real nice moment and I was very excited to take part um, and so I'll show you the yarn I'm using and I'll show you a little sample and I've got a bit of a story to tell so this is the yarn that I'm using. It is from Shilla's Dare, which is the Isle of Skye Natural, Natural Yarn Company. And this is beautiful. I really, really like this. This colour, uh, it's all naturally dyed. And this is the medium indigo, I believe. And this is just the undyed base. Um, and they're lovely together. And they are completely nailing the vibe I'm going for. I also picked this bag because it went with the yarn. <laughs> um, and I've got a little bit... I, I'm not going to tell you too much about the design because generally with, with this one I've checked, she says, like, showing little sneak peeks are completely fine um but generally like it all stays really under wraps until the pattern comes out um but i do have a lot of the show mostly because i'll show you that i made a bit of a mistake <laughs> so this is what i can show you um oh, it's not actually fully blocked so it's curling up a little bit at the sides this is like a little color week color work steeped panel um and it took me no time at all to knit up but what i wanted to show you is that my i think my needle size is too big because my colour work is pretty scruffy uh, post blocking. Usually I find that my colour work is not the neatest, but with a block is completely perfect. Um, I also made two mistakes actually following this chart up here and here. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's still looking really bumpy lumpy after being washed. So I think I used a too big a needle size. I mean, I'm pretty confident I did. Luckily this took like, this little strip only took like a night and a, night and a coffee morning worth of knitting. 
Um, it's not very many stitches. So I'm just going to cast this. This is quite nice because I wasn't convinced about this motif. I didn't know if this is the motif I wanted to go with. I'm really happy with the motif. Um, so I'm just calling this a big swatch. <laughs> and I will cast on again in a smaller needle size um, and keep going. So yeah, this will be part of the design in this form. Like I will finish, I will make another one of these and one of these will go into the design. Or be more than one of these. And that's all I'm telling you. Um, I'm very excited. It's a springtime piece, so I'm very like I'm trying to channel like spring summer vibes, even though it's like I mean it's actually quite sunny right now, but it's pretty been pretty rainy and windy. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty damp actually, so I should leave that. I'm gonna put it over there. My blocking mats are in that corner, so I'm gonna put it back in the blocking mats over the weekend, just for it to fully dry properly. I'm gonna cast on again in a smaller needle size. And actually, looking back, I definitely went up too much. I used a 3.75 needle and it's sport weight yarn. So I'm gonna go down to 3.5 and just be a bit more weary of my tension and see how we get on for at least a few rows and I'll see how it's looking and if it's looking neater, perfect. And if not, I'll go down again to a 2.25. Um, the good thing is there's not a whole lot of knitting. I've not really worked out how it's coming together yet though. So I do want to get a move on so that I can um, I think the test will be at the end of this month. So I need to get it written up and ready by the end of the month. But that's fine. That's okay. Okay, I've got one thing left to show you and I'm very excited. I showed this last time, but it was barely past, like it was barely an idea. It was really an unvalidated little bit of swatch. I, it, I'd knit just like this much up to here. And um, I had already cast on and then I had to rip it all back because it didn't fit in the way I wanted it to. Um, and it was funny because it needed quite a lot of admin work Patterns for me tend to go one of two ways. Either I can just work at my cast on numbers and I can just go and like try on as I go, or I have to work backwards. And this is a work backwards one to quite like quite extreme. I had to it's charted, it's colour work, so I had to like really think about where things would go. So it took quite a lot of time, um like quite a lot of computer time before I could keep knitting. Um and I got to that computer time this week. So this is oh it looks so good. This is the, I think it's going to be called the Rue Sweater, R-H-U-E. Um, it's the name of a really beautiful lighthouse here in Scotland. And uh, yeah, so it's a contiguous construction, which means it has these very cool like faux saddles. I'm going to see if I can show you this. At the sleeves. And then it comes down and then it does eventually go into a raglan just here. But um, this line sort of comes out and then goes down the side. Um, so it's quite like a square neck. And then you've just got a little bit of raglan to go under the arm. So really fun construction and as you can see there's some colour work so I've done three well two and a half motifs so far and I think there's gonna be two more I've got like a backup one in my pocket so I need to try it on and see where it hits um I'm so excited I've not done I guess it's a pattern like I obviously am working in colour work for this other design and I've got a magazine pattern and testing that's all over colour work but it's different like it's just different it's not like it's quite graphic whereas this is more traditional and I am obsessed um I had to rip it back again because I didn't quite get the first it works over a raglan so you have to kind of increase there's a raglan point that you have to make sure you're increasing as well as you go and I didn't think my increases through properly so I had to rip back to the start of the raglan and go again and I've knit from the top of the colour work to here in like a day yesterday because I was so I was so obsessed with it. Um, and I split for sleeves last night and I was, yeah, that was the this line. Um, this solid line here is where I split for sleeves. And I was determined that I had to slip for sleeves before I go to bed. So I stayed up past my bedtime to slip for sleeves, give it a quick try on. And now we're back in the running. So it's it's turning out really well. Like I say, I'm really, really excited. Um, I've got like a plan for how it's going to finish, but I think there are going to be two options. And so I think I'll go with the original plan with this one and see if I like it. And then with the other one, I'll have like a different, different option. <laughs> I'm using the Fiber Company Lore and it's beautiful. It's really nice yarn. I asked on Instagram for recommendations for colour work yarn and this was recommended as one of them. I can't remember the colours. I think this one's called Stable and that's about all I can remember. This is a beautiful heathered green. Again, the heathering doesn't really show up unless it's like really hitting it. 
And then this is a sort of, again, a very heathered, um, like beige hay color. And I think they're lovely together. Very, very like rustic and autumnal. Um, and yeah, I'm, I think I want the second one to be maybe black and white or gray, like pale gray and white. But again, I don't know. There's also a very beautiful red um, or like burnt orange red color in this yarn. And I'm very tempted to do that one for the second sample because it's stunning. I say second sample, like I've not got most of a sweater and two sleeves still today. Um, I'm in the really fun color work now where it's just like small repeats of like three by one or one by one or two by one. So it's really flying. And yeah, my goal is to have this ready by the end of September. This will be a January pattern. So we're still miles out. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited. It's always, there's always a point where you, you've got, well for me anyway, I have a design in my head and I kind of have like an end, I often have like an end look. I think I almost always do, like I almost always know exactly what I want this to look like when it's finished. And as much as like you work back and you break that end piece down into different components, there's still a fear that it's not gonna look that way. I found that with my stick season, that the first method I used for it was not delivering what I had in my head. So I ripped it out and then started again with a different construction and it worked so much better. This one is like that. Like every time I try it on, it's like, oh, like a sigh of relief and then like pure excitement that it looks how I thought it would look in my head. So that is really fun. And honestly, color work is so satisfying. It takes a long time. The few rows that I was working before I split for sleeves, I was it was a slog. I was like, oh, because you have obviously all the sleeve stitches and all the body stitches. Um, but now that it's just the body, it's flying, which is really nice. So I'm really enjoying this one. Um, it was interesting. I was talking about this at night night and I was talking about this to my partner this week. Um, I had a design in mind for, so I knew this one was there and then I thought I had the next one in mind. And I was gonna use a caliper cable or an elongated cable and I swatched it and I hated knitting it. I just, it was so much work and it was something every single row and there was no like respite and I just thought no way, like this is beautiful but it's not, like a knitting experience, I don't want to knit the whole sweater. So at that point I realised, okay, I've got this in my head, I don't know what comes next. Um, and so I kind of like, I was kind of like, I usually try to stay quite close to inspiration and I kind of collect it, but I don't really deep dive on it. Like I collect, I don't know why I take pictures of people in the street sometimes, I make sure their faces aren't in it, but like this one, or I'll like see someone's sweater and I'll like make a quick note, like do 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 do, I love this. I like, this little detail was amazing. I love some ready to wear pieces. I love, I like to look through stitch pattern dictionaries. Um, and I kind of collect it all the time, but the process of like having that final look in my head doesn't, like, I don't open myself to that very often because I think it's overly overwhelming and I don't want to just have quite constant ideas. Otherwise I don't have any time to work through them. So maybe two weeks ago I thought, okay, I know this one, like the next one's not there. Let's kind of like open those doors a little bit more so that inspiration and like let my brain start working through some of those things. And it was like an explosion. And I now know, I think what at least the next two are gonna look like after this. So that's kind of fun. I think that's all my designs for the rest of the year, like winter year. And then I'll do the Tulsa tank in the summer and like we'll see if there's anything else in the summer. I'm not sure. Um, I find summer harder to design for in the winter. Um, and I'll definitely be taking a break next summer. So, uh, but yeah, I just thought that was interesting that it was like a, something I kind of learned about my process is that I, I like to sort of collect these little bits of information, but I don't really let myself sit with it. I just kind of let it sit on the back burner and just kind of bubble away. And then this week I was like, okay, like take it all in. And I sat down and I was like, oh, what it was like, immediately I have like my next two ideas. Pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start swatching for that at some point soon, probably next week, but right now I'm just enjoying working on this a lot. I'm not really having any deadlines. I've got like far away deadlines, but still manageable deadlines, which is quite nice. <laughs> so that's all of my knitting. Um, I'm in a really nice place with it right now. I'm really enjoying what I have on my needles. I'm feeling really good about, I'm really good about the older. I'm really excited about what's coming next. Next is stick season, which is going to be really cool and then um, charity releases and then my next one's there. So like I'm feeling good and that's me kind of planned up. I guess that's kind of a quite a good way of showing how I'm thinking about things. So 
the stick season test has started, the, sorry, the cardigan test has started. I'm now thinking about a January pattern, so I'm working on that one. And then I'll probably, in the next couple of weeks, start thinking about, and probably when my stick season sample is done, I'll probably cast on for my, I don't know if it'll be February or March, I've not really decided on that yet, pattern. Um, so it's all just kind of bubbling away. And that's kind of the distance I'm out all the time, is yeah, now it's what, October, and I'm, I'm working on my January pattern. Um, I keep a, I keep a, I keep a, t a table, a timetable. Um, I'm a product manager, so I, 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 my day job, so I plan for releases quite often at work, and so that's kind of what I do. I backwards plan. So if I'm due to release this on this date, like how long are you for the test period? Usually eight, eight to nine weeks, and then probably six weeks before that for my own knitting and for my the design write up, and so like that's how I plan backwards. And it's quite nice because I forget all my deadlines, but it's quite easy to open up my document and see I'm in this week. And like this week is when the release is, and this week I have to have it ready for launch and things. So that's always quite fun. Um, cool, I've got one acquisition and then a few little life updates. My acquisition is bag. I don't need any more bags, but I bought one anyway. I thought I needed more bags. Like I bought this when I was like, oh, I'm really running out of bags. And then I just reshuffled some things and realized I have lots. <laughs> But this is a bag, it's got a few skeins actually. What's it got in here? It's got an individual skein of yarn and my last skein of Fonte Angora. And oh, I don't think I showed these last time. I got these stitch markers when I was at the Scottish Farm Festival. They're from Bubbles and Berries, who is old, who is local, um, and these were on the Zakami um, stand, and they are moon phases. I've not used them yet, as you can. As you can tell. Um, but yeah, this bag is from Willow Bay Bags and it's all corduroy and I've got a little one of this, a little yellow one, which I think was gifted. And this is a big version in this like terracotta clay. And it's good, it's really big, which is nice. I think my stick season might have to move into this because I think it's getting too big. Um, and that'll be the bag I'm moving into. So that is my acquisition this week. Um, cool. That's everything for knitting. I feel like I've gone through that pretty quickly but maybe I've not. Um, so then two sort of things to wrap up with before I leave. The first thing is that last week, so the 30th of September, was my one year on since I first released my first pattern which was the cargill sweater. Um, so it feels weird, it feels like it's been like so much longer than a year but also so much less than a year. I, anyone who's been around for that long will know that I said I will design one thing. So I'm just going to do one. Like I don't think I've got it in me to do more, I'll just do one. Um, and as we can all see by the 17 designs I've just shown you, that is not the case. Um, but yeah, firstly I think I'm going to do a video next week around the designing process and try and answer some questions and just talk about like my reflections on one year of designing. So if you have any questions feel free to um, put them down below and I'll try and answer some of them in a video next week. Um, but the second thing is I got myself a little a little something to mark a year on. Um, I think the year has been a lot for me, like in very different ways, but I think the primary thing that I've loved about this year has been sort of harnessing my own creativity, which sounds very fluffy, but I remember when I, so I studied in the Netherlands for three years, I did one year, I came back, I went back for two years. And when I came back from that first year, I remember telling my friends at home here that um, my nickname in the Netherlands was the Crea Bea because it means like a crafty person or a crafty woman in Dutch and it was always like oh yeah Rebecca such a Crea Bea because I could always just conjure up sorry there's like glare right on my face I will turn a little bit um I could like conjure up crafty solutions to everything um and I told my friends this and they were like oh but you're not creative like you're just crafty you're just good at crafts and I was like oh yeah you're right like I'm actually not creative I'm really just crafty and that stuck with me for so long. That was seven years ago or something. And I can still remember this exact conversation. And so it really put me down, like, oh, I'm not a creative person. And I think this year has been a lot about like re-harnessing that. Like I, I am a creative person. I am a creative professional. Uh, and I, you know, the art of creation is bringing something into existence which didn't exist before. And so every single stitch that we make or every single pattern or every single, you know, that's all creativity. But it has meant a lot to me this year to sort of harness that and to feel like I've got a creative outlet. And it's just been, you know, I've not had a pattern that's flopped. I've, they've all done 
pretty well, they've all done pretty consistently, I got to work with some amazing people, I really feel like a part of a community and it's just been a really special year. So I got myself a little, a little something and I'm going to show it to you. I've not actually shown this on Instagram yet um, but I thought I would show it off here first. Um, I got a tattoo and I don't have any tattoos so this is my first tattoo and I got a little yarn skein. <laughs> Just a little bit closer. It's still in the healing process. It's been about two weeks, so it's a little bit dry still. And I can feel it's a bit raised. Um, but this is my little skein. So I will now never run out of yarn. <laughs> and I don't think I can say that I'm ever going to be playing yarn chicken because I will always have my own skein with me. So I got that done a week and a half ago. And I love it so much. It's really, really cute. It's really nice to see it on camera, actually. Um, and yeah, I like that for a knitter, you know immediately, like, of course you know it's a skein of yarn. If you're not a knitter, it's just like a fun little swirl or like, it looks a bit like a hair braid or a croissant or something. <laughs> but if you're a knitter, you know. Um, so yeah, that was my fun little thing for myself. It felt like a big deal and now I'm just like, it's not that much of a big deal, it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it felt like if there was ever a reason to get one, it was a real sort of like personal achievement and a big year for me, so. That's my tattoo. Um, my other life update has got absolutely nothing to do with knitting. <laughs> I mentioned it last time and I was like, I've got a bit of a life update, like I'm not pregnant, I've not bought a house, like none of those things. Um, we bought a boat. <laughs> we bought a sailing boat. Um, if you remember, if you've been watching a while, a few weeks ago, it was my end of August was my birthday and we were going on a day trip for my birthday and I thought we were going to an alpaca farm. We were not going to an alpaca farm. We went on a boat trip to an island called the Isle of May um, and we came back and it was just such a nice day and there were little boats everywhere and we were in North Berwick and there were lots of little sailing boats and whenever we go somewhere with sailing boats Sam's like always like oh that's the sort of boat I would get like that sort of boat I'd love, I'd love to get on the way back from North Berwick I said to Sam like let's have a look like, let's look and see if there are any boats that would look would do what we want like we want to get we want sailing to become a bigger part of our lives I had done some sailing when I was younger my grandparents uh, they had a sailboat so I used to do a lot of sailing holidays with them and Sam is an ex-professional sailor so he has a lot of sailing experience I think this is like the longest he's not sailed in since he was like before he started and when I met him he just finished um he was partially way through around the world yacht race when Covid struck so like sailing is a big thing for him um and actually he on our very first, before for our first date, Sam suggested that we went to look at a boat he was considering buying, but the place that it was was the middle of nowhere. And I was like, I'm not going to the middle of nowhere with you. Like, I don't know who you are. Let's just go to the pub in the city. So we went to the pub in the city. And three years later, we went to visit the boat. <laughs> so um, it is, for anyone who knows anything about boats, it's a 23 foot uh, ledger. It's called a Ledger 23. It's a dinky little thing. She is sort of chubby and short and not really like a graceful sailing yacht but a very seaworthy boat very good for us to be practicing and learning in for us to understand like how sailing could fit into our lives it's something we want to do more of something we actually like we've kind of talked about it a lot but is it really something we want to do we are not moving on to the boat the boat is like it does sleep people so it's it's fondly i'd like to think of it as a caravan with a mast it's pretty dinky um but we can sleep on it and we can cook on it and uh, we'll be going there tonight, spend the night on the boat tonight, do some sailing tomorrow, come home tomorrow. So like, it's not a full time moving to a boat situation, um, but it is spending a lot more time on a boat. So that's exciting. I'll put some pictures up. We went out last weekend. We had to move her from her old harbour to her new harbour. The old harbour was tidal, so we could only access the boat or we could only take her out sailing at certain times of the day. And we really want to make sure that we can get as much sailing time as possible. We've kind of said we'll do it for a year and then we'll reevaluate if the boat is right. If, it's, if we're getting enough out of it, it's not, you know, an expensive hobby. It's not an expensive boat, but by boat standards, but you know, it's still an expensive thing to spend money on. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible to get out sailing. And so we've moved it to a marina that we can access more. And yeah, it's really exciting. So our cute little boat um, is currently, well, we're renaming her. So she will be called Guga um, and yeah, There'll be some more boat adventures I guess so that's really exciting I after filming this will be getting all the older stuff released and then packing up so we can go sailing tomorrow 
Um, so yeah, kind of a big life update, like a big deal in terms of like what changed my life a lot. Don't imagine it'll change my ceiling content very much. Uh, I just need to make sure I have enough time to knit. <laughs> but I do have a couple of boat projects ready um, for this weekend. So that's it for me, I think. Not much else going on. The two weeks time is Rhinebeck, which is really, really soon. And yeah, I in my head it's still ages away, but actually it's not ages away. I think I will have a video out before then. Um, but yeah, for anyone who is also attending, I'll be there on, I think on Thursday, we're going to pick up every stitch for a little brunch get together thing. And then on Friday, we're going to Woolen Folk and on Saturday and Sunday, I'll be at Rhinebeck. Um, I leave on Sunday evening. So I'll be heading back like mid to late afternoon to get a train um, so I can get back to JFK to fly home. And I'm really excited. I am looking forward to it. Right now I'm mostly nervous about it just cause I don't know, it's just, a new thing but I'm looking forward to it a lot. I am really lucky to be going with Amy Palco who lives about 10 minutes from me <laughs> um, and so we're gonna we've got the same flight together and like all that so that makes life very easy and we do of course have um, the lovely Mega from Skeins of Dreams uh, is our um, car buddy for the weekend so she's making sure we can get from A to B and the three of us have got some Airbnbs booked and yeah really excited for it um, and I'll of course have some yarn to buy. So that's everything for me. I hope you've enjoyed this little update. Um, final reminder, it is Alter Day. So if you are interested in this pattern or you want to show it some love, the links for both Etsy and Ravelry are down below, along with a little discount code. And the tester sign up for my shawl will also be there. So lots to engage with if you want to. <laughs> I'll be back soon, definitely two weeks, maybe next week with a designer video. And until then, happy knitting. Bye.